Now it's time for my daily interview series, Money Talks, and it's a pleasure to be joined by a very special guest, one of the world's most prolific entertainment moguls, the owner of SSK Records, Stephen Mashat. Now, to say that Stephen's had a colourful career is a bit of an understatement. He worked with, he's worked with some of the music industry's icons, from Elvis Presley to Phil Collins. He used to share a flat with Leonard Cohen, this bloke, and hallelujah, he's worked with the Dalai Lama. As a son of entertainment lawyer Marty Mashat, who famously represented the Rolling Stones, Steve was exposed to the music industry from a young age. Born and raised in New York City and spending much of his childhood accompanying his father on road trips with the rock and roll legends. It's no wonder his passion for music was ignited and he decided to forge a career in the industry. He's got an accounting degree. More recently, he's produced rap artist Snoop Dogg. And Stephen Mashat's written no fewer than 10 books. And here he is in the studio, music industry legend Stephen Mashat, my latest guest on Money Talks. Hey, I'm honoured. Good to see you, Stephen. Thank you so much for joining me here in the studio. When I look at the music industry today, I'm a bit concerned, and I'll tell you why. Because when I was a kid, you'd follow bands, they'd get going in pubs and clubs. Obviously, I'm a Londoner, you can tell from my accent. It seems to me now there's no way into the music industry for those bands that come up from the streets. Bands are identified, promoted on social media by executives in L.A. with spreadsheets rather than being chosen by the kids, chosen by the followers. Is there something in that? Yes, between those lines, it's 100 percent true. What happened is the world you were born in was the world I started working in and Artists, they were quality. And if you have quality, you have quantity. But all these schools of economics where you go, they teach you how to make quantity more quantity. Mm. But art's a different world. Art requires quality. And if you have the quality, you've got the seeds that you will be able to sow forever and ever more. And music is art. Film is art. Books, even books are art, you know. You get people to like it and they'll buy it and they'll buy it and they'll buy it. But to teach people quality is hard. What do you say to, to, to young musicians and even not so young musicians trying to break through Stephen? I mean, in the old days, they'd just be gigging and gigging and gigging, learning their chops, playing to as many people as they could, moving around the country as much as they could to try and find an audience. Now it seems like they should be social media consultants. They should be playing with their computers. They should be online all the time. It seems to be a very different world. You're 100% correct. We opened up SSK Records <clears throat> with my son. I had hippos and tanks, and we were breaking artists, and unfortunately, he died in a rock and roll accident. And then 2015, right? Yeah, mm. thank you. And, you know, I ended up running for the U.S. Senate. I ended up running for Congress, and with my wife, who loves music, I decided, okay, I'll do this, and let's do it. And we signed Rock's Revolt and the Velvets. And I brought it to England, and I was going to, I didn't bring it to England, but I brought the music to England, and I couldn't get her out of the United States because she was from Venezuela and she didn't have her passport. Okay, yeah. But I came real close to breaking it the old fashioned way. You know, and what they do now is it's all computer. Mm. That's where you're correct. And they don't have a clue about the emotions that come from you from mm. when, when mm. I throw music your way. Mm. They don't get it mm. because you want to be emotionally attached. Mm. Like your man out here is in the 10 CC. Mm. I told him you should listen to the Art of Noise. Which yeah, became, I remember the Art of Noise. Right? Wow, well, they agree, yeah. right? So anyway, today's world, they want computer graphics. They want you on Spotify. Spotify doesn't pay you. So what do you do? You hire people to make believe you have streams. Yeah. So now all of a sudden you're playing the game of streams. People aren't listening to that. Yeah, this is, this is the thing. I grew up in London in the 70s and early 80s. It was the London of the Sex Pistols. It was the London of, of madness, right? Bands like massive bands. Our house. That, that, that absolutely ruled the world in their day and yeah, had yeah. enormous cultural influence who reflected the societies, often the working class societies that they came from. These guys were modern day poets. I don't exaggerate. I don't apologise for saying that. There is no way the Sex Pistols or the madnesses of today would be discovered because you've got to have a million followers on social media before any music executive will look at you these days and often it's you know the sons of you know extremely wealthy people and the daughters of extremely wealthy people who've got the social media smarts who buy the followers 
It strikes me that the popular music industry, which has always been about social mobility, about ordinary people gaining a broad audience through talent and chutzpah, all that aspect is, is going. The soul's leaving the industry. I agree with you because they don't understand that the industry is art that becomes business. Mm. So what they do is, again, they've got these people from Wharton School of Business in my area or any of your top colleges here, and they teach you how to make quantity yeah. out of quantity. But they don't teach you, go find the art, go find their audience, go create their audience, go create a following, make people follow it, make people believe, make people believe in the success that each and every one of them could have if you put together a team so you could live a dream. That's the goal of life, is to create the dream. Not to sit here and be a widget. Mm. It's, that's not the game. Because I believe in love. Music is love. Music is energy. When it becomes Music is also a way, uh, it's, it's a way of, of society expressing itself. And it's, if it's only groups from more privileged parts of society expressing themselves, then we've got a, re a real problem. Look at the acting industry. It's full of posh people. Yep. Look at the music industry. It's full of posh people. Where's the chance for the working class kids to use acting, to use music, to reach out and to talk to their people and demonstrate to their people that they can generate a platform? Well, that's the goal of SSK Records. Now, I've done this my whole life. You're looking for the idolists, the ones that hear, the ones that get different energies. And SSK, it's the school of sacred knowledge dot com. Mm. Go there. I, I teach you, you know, people that mystics, people that are looking for more, people that put together a team to get you more. And it's because in the world that we live today, it's here. All your songs have the same beat in English radio. But the one thing you do have is you have a system here where you basically you'll point out this child's got a little different. This child yeah, knows poetry. Yeah, yeah. And you'll train these people. Yeah. That's why your country here, and I've, I feel like an Anglophile anyway. Yeah, I've lived here forever. You have massive connections with our industry. And you know, I love your country too because you dream. So, My country has no dream. Look at what we put out. It's all repetitive. And it just doesn't work except just, for hip-hop Just brief, Just briefly, you know, you're, you, you, you love the UK. My family came to England from, from Ireland. I've lived here, born here, lived here all my life. We both love this country. Just briefly, Stephen, from a music industry legend, why is the UK so good at pop music? Because you create it. You sit there in these schools, what I said a couple of seconds ago, is when they're going through schools, you isolate those students who are into the arts and a little maybe of the sciences. But those that can create, you understand when they get out. And if you pick the right ones, they go out and they wear you. You know, be it Mick Jagger, who, you know, because of my father I knew forever. Yeah. Or, or Peter Gabriel, Phil Collins. When they go out in public, they represent the UK. You have a land of the dreams from your queen and everyone being a prince or a princess you could you could get your dreams to come true here. And these people in your country, they go for their A-levels this way. And if they want to deal music, you actually support people to make music. You give, as long as they report to you and tell you what they're doing, you support people to go try, try to find their dreams. It's beautiful. That's why you sing a songwriters pull it off. Well, the British music industry, we are, of course, massive world beaters from the Rolling Stones to Oasis, Genesis and beyond. I think, uh, I think it's great to, to hear from you, Stephen. Thanks for being so kind about this country. But I do worry, as we've discussed, and I think you share my concerns, Big time. that the music industry is not allowing regular kids in regular bands to come through. But it's an honour to meet you. Thanks so much for being my latest but guest. I'll, sh I'll on share Money one Talks. thing with you. It's going to be an overthrow. Spotify will collapse. And the music's going to come back because you've got to express yourself. And if you don't express yourself, it won't work. And thank you for having me. You heard it I'm here first. You. you heard it here first. On the money from Stephen Machat.